Hello fellow classmate and welcome to my last lab of the semester which is about Slinky. Actually guys, I lied to you. This lab is actually a mission for you. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to help Buzz Lightyear defeat Emperor Zerg by determining if the bottom of Slinky is at rest when a stretched Slinky is dropped from rest. <clears throat> that was weird. Anyways, to help Buzz Lightyear, we used the tracker software to investigate the motion of the fallen slinky. As with literally every other lab we used so far, we used Close Grip to make a computational model of the falling motion. We then compare the computational model with the actual motion we detected in tracker, and with this, we can help put an end to Emperor Zerg's reign of terror. Being the great friend he is, Woody provided us with some tools we can use in this mission. For one, we have Newton's second law which for our interpretation is going to be final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus net force over mass times change in time. For our mission, the net force is going to be the sum of the gravitational force, the drag force, and the force acting upon the slinky. Woody also provided us with our position update formula. This states that our final position is going to be equal to our initial position plus our average velocity times the change in time. Finally, Woody was nice enough to provide us with the gravitational force formula, which says that the force of gravity is going to be negative mass times the gravitational constant times our unit vector, our unit vector telling us which direction our moment is in. Our friend Jesse also has some contributions to our mission. She gave us the drag force, which is the negative of the drag constant times the square of our object's velocity. Derek from Veritasium and Professor Rod Cross from the University of Sydney also offered to help and you can see here that when you do drop a slinky from a height, from rest, the bottom stays at rest until acted upon by the rest of the slinky. With this, we can come to a conclusion about our initial mission question. However, for this mission, we also need a computational model from Close Script. Lucky for us, Rex happens to be a retired software engineer from Seattle. So let's get his help for Close Script. Here, we set the initial mass of our slinky to be 0.25 grams. The initial position and velocity is zero in all directions, and our unit vector is only pointing in the right direction. The gravitational constant is 9.8 meters per second squared, which you have as 9.8, and I arbitrarily set the drag constant to be 53. It turns out Ham is also a software developer. Using his help, we can determine the net forces acting upon our slinky when the bottom of the slinky was at rest. The two forces acting upon the bottom of the slinky during this time was the force of tension and the force of gravity. In line 63, we sum these up to get the net force, and in the following lines, we used the rules that Woody gave us, the Newton's second law and the position update formula. Lastly, Mr. Potato Head, in order to satisfy his wife, also joined the IT crowd and is able to help us with close script. No idea why Mrs. Potato Head wanted that for him, but at least he can help us now. This is a block of code where we calculate all of the information for the time that the slinky or the bottom of the slinky is moving and falling down. We see here that the two forces acting upon our slinky includes the drag force and the force of gravity. On line 91 we add these up and in the following lines we use Newton's second law and the position update formula to update our computational model. Now, it is my honor to say that we have accomplished our mission. We can see here that in both the computational model and our observed data, the bottom of the slinky doesn't move until about a few seconds later. In the graph for observed data, you can see that the line isn't as straight as the one in the computational model. And this is due to some user, some human error and some discrepancies with the slinky being dropped. This includes things such as air resistance or the drag constant being different in the real model versus the computational model. However, the bottom line is that the bottom of the slinky doesn't quite move until the top of the slinky hits it, which solves our initial question, and we use the computational model to prove that, along with our real data. Now finally, I want to thank you for being part of our mission, and on a more serious note, I want to thank you guys for the semester, and I want to wish you good luck for your final exams. Take care.